Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for the first ever Tech and Tie-Dye community meetup. Uh, for those who know me, I apologize. For those who don't, I'm the marketing plugin and golden retriever at LSD. Um, I used to manage the Elastic SA community over the years and kind of started joining, uh, started getting joined by some of the LSD guys to, to um, you know, present at these meetups. And now it's, it's really nice that we're kind of working on the same team to bring these events to you. Um, and yeah, so um, this, this community is a, is a, has a brand new focus because we realized that even though we all kind of work around the core of technology in the ICT industry, there's more to it. There's more to this job and, and more to who we are. Um, so we decided to start creating a community that'll bring in topics like leadership, motivation, um, self-improvement, teamwork, uh, mindfulness, you know, things that work, you know, for us and for other people. Um, and openly sharing that information is kind of, you know, a way for all of us to, to learn together. And we really want to encourage that. Um, so, yeah, so I'm just going to do a sh uh, just a short intro of who we are. So, we're in a, you, know, you all know us, we're kind of a, a tech hippie company, LSD. Um, but we really don't want to turn this into kind of a sales thing. You know, we, we really want to do this as a community focused event. Um, because at the end of the day, all of us like open source technology and can benefit from all of the other lessons that we're trying to share out here. Um, so having said that, please don't feel bad if you join for the leadership session and, uh, you know, and if you want to leave before the tech session, we really understand that. Like some of the stuff really is, um, you know, a bit too complicated. Um, even for me sometimes so but if you really want to stay around the, uh, please join us it's fantastic stuff that Jules is going to show off tonight um, so yeah the we kind of want to expand this when lockdown lifts a bit to include physical events too because it's nice seeing people face to face but digital works too so we'll try to keep this regular like once a month maybe um, and yeah so we really kind of want to do an open environment um, where, and I, I'm, I'm putting out a call um, to our community, especially to women and people of color to, to come forward and, um, you know, nominate to, for speaker slots because I really want to make this an inclusive place where everyone gets to share their view openly and, you know, and share the experiences they have. So if there's any, you know, if there's anyone that would like to, to contribute to a speaker slot, please contact me at tech and tie dye at lsd.ca.za and we'll set something up. Um, we also have a home. Uh, we've got a public Discord server, which we encourage you to join if you use Discord. Um, you can take the conversation offline uh, if there was something interesting that you saw or, or if you would like to talk about some of the open source tech and ideas that we present. Um, so. After the event, I'll send out a, a message to everyone with like a post event server and an invite to this uh, channel. And you're welcome to join us. Um, all of us poke around there quite regularly and share memes and talk nonsense. So please join us. Um, we've got Jules, who's going to present fun with GitOps, um, Argo CD, and Tekton. Um, Jules is a, a real open source rock star, and you know, he can really. He has this way of explaining technology so that you can understand it down to the best, finest detail. Jules, are you ready? Jules. Hello. Hi. How's it going? I'm just going to share my screen. Um, cool. Thanks. Is that visible? Show of hands. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Thanks. Um, and thank you, Steph. I don't have pictures of naked people, just this picture of myself. And I was thinking about this picture. I was taking an Africa burn last year. And I still have those, those, those pants, not really pants. Um, they're actually my girlfriend's. And after lockdown, I don't think I would fit into them anymore. So that's a sad thought. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to be talking about GitOps as kind of a, a broad term. So into like the technical stuff. And I'm going to run through just a little bit of context just to get the kind of tone as to what we're talking about when we're talking about Argo and Tekton and you know, for some people, maybe Kubernetes itself. Um, and I know I'm kind of pressed for time. So I'm going to keep this fairly brief because uh, I also want like some time for questions. So I'm going to go to a pretty quick pace uh, just so we can kind of cover all the ground. 
So just to kind of get into the thick of, thick of things and kick things off, um, this is kind of what we're gonna be showing you today, or I'm gonna be showing you today. It's kind of marrying a lot of open source tech, uh, specifically in the cloud native DevOps space. Um, some, you know, everyone will be fairly familiar with if you kind of work in tech or kind of touch DevOps or development, things like Git. Uh, probably more so Kubernetes as well, like more and more so lately. But Tekton and Argo are kind of new and emerging things. And we're going to step through kind of what they are. I, th I did think it was kind of important to just frame why, why we're seeing the emergence of new models um, that have kind of been coupled or, or go hand in hand now with this whole notion of cloud native and what that means. But obviously, you know, I mean, if anything, think about things like this, this pandemic and lockdown. Um, orgs are moving to, you know, the internet and becoming internet scale and everything is kind of switching to digital. And with that, you know, we are inheriting a lot of, you know, let's say problems that the, the likes of these internet scale companies such as Google and Facebook and LinkedIn have already solved for. And this is kind of, you know, tough engineering problems like distributed systems and, and you know, keeping things, you know, synchronized and state management, et cetera, et cetera. And GitOps has kind of emerged as a bit of an operating model or a bit of a framework. Um, it was kind of the, one of the real um, big talking points of KubeCon last year. And it really originated from a company, I believe it was originated from a company called Weaveworks. Although I'm sure there were kind of patterns of it that, you know, had been around in some form or another before. And really like these are the four principles that they kind of identify that, you know, uh, accord to the GitOps model. And the first is everything must be described declaratively. So I should be able to declare something state. Uh, pretty much as simple as that. Um, the second thing, obviously the Git and the GitOps, you know, is that everything should be versioned in Git. Uh, or I guess as a principle in an SEM, but really in Git. So I should be able to revert back to a previous version of the thing that I declared and uh, look at what it was and potentially apply it. Um, and then importantly, the way you apply changes to your environment, to an application, to you know, an entire landscape should be managed through, through Git and through a developer workflow um, that um, you know, can kind of essentially be the gatekeeper or the conduit for how things get modified throughout your environment. And when I say environment, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're talking solely about Kubernetes, although it is a big focus, but really anything can be managed through Git. Um, I like to cite GitLab, who are actually one of our partners, um, who are you know, one of the original fully remote, fully distributed uh, companies. They, they never had offices. They, you know, have people working for them all around the world and pretty much everything they do from, you know, booking flights for employees to holding meetings to changing a, you know, the way the company is structured or changing a policy happens through Git, happens through, you know, a, a, a pull request or a merge request uh, from someone. So pretty much everyone from, you know, the, the technical team all the way through to HR has some fluid you know, fluency in being able to kind of apply, you know, get, get workflows as a practice. Um, lastly, software agents are kind of necessary to ensure that you've got that state applied to your environment. And that's really kind of what we're going to get into now from an Argo perspective. So obviously Git is housing all of the states and it's, you know, declaratively described and it's version controlled, but how do you actually go and apply what's in your source code, what's in source, uh, to your environment at large. And that's where, you know, you kind of need a, an agent or a controller to bridge that, that world. Oops, going backwards, not forwards. So real quick, Argo. Um, Argo CD uh, is a declarative GitOps tool chain for Kubernetes. It deploys to Kubernetes as a controller, it deploys as a custom resource definition. You can stand up Argo really quickly. It's pretty much one YAML that you apply uh, and it goes and creates all the custom resources inside of Kubernetes. Um, and what Argo was designed to do uh, is essentially support and enable that GitOps pattern that we were talking about. So it acts as a GitOps agent, uh, you know, and its, it's full name is Argo CD, 
And I think that's important to underline, like why the CE? Well, for continuous delivery. So Argo is essentially an agent that will ensure state is reflected from your Git environment through to you know, your operating environment, in this case, Kubernetes specifically. Um, what it doesn't do is it won't build your resources. It won't build you, uh, you know, an application. It won't compile a executable or a jar. Um, it's not going to actually do the CI part of your typical CI CD workflow. So the CI being continuous integration, how can I take code that I'm adding to a code base and continually integrate it, adding features and making sure that I've got you know, sufficient amounts of test automation and build automation that that new code can get added and pushed out to my productive environment, to customers, they can see and leverage and benefit from these features. Argo is focused on the CD part, which is more around being able to actually deliver um, you know, what, what you're building out to the world at large in a way that kind of aligns to the GitOps pattern. So um, I have kind of thinking at this point, I'm going to take a quick uh, break from the slides to actually show what Argo looks like um, because we're going to be jumping back and forth to a degree. Uh, I just want to move the Zoom thing. Cool. So this is Argo. Uh, you can um, see from the Oxbus. <laughs> And Argo is pretty straightforward. It's got a client tool that you can use to actually just, you know, uh, configure it without any uh, front end. And Argo is running inside of our Kubernetes cluster here. So we've just got it applied. And these are our um, various Argo pods. Uh, and there's a controller that gets created that essentially runs kind of an infinite loop and looks at, you know, what you've configured into, inside of your Git projects and applies it out. This is all running inside of our Anthos Kubernetes environment in our lab cluster. So what we're going to do quick before we get into this guy is we're going to deploy an application. So uh, for the purposes of the uh, application deployment, we've got a demo server. So this is just a tiny spring app, um, nothing super complicated, it's supposed to be illustrative. And what it does is it literally just uh, has a few endpoints that give us the version and the time it was built and um, the actual build profile. So whether we're building for a development environment or production environment. And um, as a you know, developer, one of the things that I guess we've kind of recognized doing <clears throat> a lot of uh, CI CD projects and a lot of Kubernetes and OpenShift is um, you, you really want to reduce the constraints or the overhead on your developers from having to, you know, spend hours and hours looking at pipelines and, you know, changing and modifying things. Uh, our kind of uh, takeaway or, or um, one of our overarching themes when we, when we try and drive CICD projects is, you know, these should be enabling and catalyzing developments, software, software development, it shouldn't be getting in the way of developers. And then I feel like often, you know, people kind of get, get stuck in applying every tool to, you know, that's, that's out there to their CI CD workflow. And what ultimately ends up happening is it just becomes a cumbersome pain. So uh, throughout this demo, I've tried to use that as a principle. I, I, as a developer, I really don't want to, and not that I'm, you know, I don't want to leave the IDE. So this is my IDE, this is where the code's been built. Um, but, uh, what I want to illustrate is, you know, as a typical workflow, I would first like to build my service locally. So, you know, you always want a quick feedback loop um, when you're when you're building and diving and, and and getting things up and running. It's a big misnomer to think that the first thing you do is create this long, complicated, you know, CI/CD workflow. The first thing you're going to do is confirm you can actually build it on your laptop before anything else. So. Um, I've got a little helper script that just, you know, does the, the Maven build, creates a, a jar artifact for me, and then actually puts all of that inside of a Docker container. So just waiting for the Docker build to finish. And nice, pretty much cached. So it's built my Docker service, given it a tag based on a version that I've set. And I'm just going to run the latest version of our application here. And that should just start up the app. 
And if I flip over to another terminal and I query it, I get a response from our really simplistic REST endpoint here, just giving us the version, the time it was built in the build profile. So all good and well and nothing over the top there. Um, what I want to do though is um, I'm happy with this. I want to commit this uh, to my source code, to my, you know, my repository, my, my code base. And I want it to be deployed inside of a development environment that we've got running in, you know, Anthos Kubernetes on-premise somewhere so that other devs can, you know, do whatever they need to do with it. And um, one of the, the patterns around, you know, GitOps is I can actually declaratively store how the infrastructure side of the service, you know, should be deployed in my environment along with the source code. So um, I've got a little directory here and that directory has all of the Kubernetes resources that I need to actually deploy the service into a development environment. Um, so uh, I'm not gonna get too, too uh, in depth there because it's gonna become nice and visual very quickly. What I'm gonna do in, in um, Argo is I'm going to deploy my application. I've already created a namespace in Anthos uh, representing our dev environment here. I'm going to set a sync policy which tells Anthos how frequently it should uh, synchronize content or, or resources from uh, our Git repo through to our target Kubernetes environment and to, to the namespace that we've defined here. So you can leave it on a, uh, manual if you want to have some kind of control over when things should be synchronized through. I like to turn on prune resources. That just means that anything that's not stored in my Git repo um, should actually just be deleted. So a bit of a, a tricky one, but I want to adhere to that GitOps pattern of declarative and you know, canonical, what is in Git is the truth. The, the second thing I've got here is obviously the, the Git repo. So we're using our own GitLab, which looks like this. This is on the, uh, Git graph here of, of different commits. And obviously that's got all of our Kubernetes resources that we need to deploy. Um, I am using a release tag for my development uh, releases. So, you know, there's a myriad of different ways you can kind of decide to, to uh, you know, approach Git and Git flow, and feature flags, whatever it is. I'm just using a simple tag that illustrates um, how we're gonna achieve a, a GitOps pattern. The next thing I need to do is just tell uh, Argo where my resources are inside of my tagged branch inside of my repo. So I've got them sitting in this uh, resource directory under develop. I could have an additional directory for prod or I could keep it all you know, um, within a single branch and have, different, uh, have a, a master template, for example, for everything. I'm just keeping everything in a single one. And then I'm just gonna set my cluster. So I've got Argo's run, Argo running on uh, Anthos Kubernetes, um, but I could also define, for example, a separate uh, cluster somewhere else and have Argo manage multiple clusters as well and or use apply to multiple clusters uh, as well. So quite a nice um, uh, pattern there if you can have kind of multi-cluster distribution. Um, and then lastly, I'm gonna give it a namespace that I want to uh, deploy to. So got this nice Visual Studio Code Kubernetes Explorer here, and I'm working on the lab cluster at the moment in Anthos. And if I look at the, the namespaces, uh, I've got this demo service dev namespace. And real quick, if we, if we look at what's in there right now, We're not gonna see much more to say that. So this is an empty dormant namespace and I'm just gonna let that create. Assume everything is hunky-dory. So what Argo is doing now is it's checked out the code in, uh, in our Git repository. Uh, based on that Git tag that I've created for development releases. And it is now going and scaffolding all of those resources that are needed to deploy my uh, running uh, service into my development 
uh, Kubernetes namespace. So there you can see the pod is, you know, we've got a, one pod starting with our demo backend service. And it has all of these different uh, resources associated to it. So this is actually quite a simple scaffold in Kubernetes. We've got a config map, which sets some, some config variables, some Java specific stuff, uh, an image pull secret to be able to pull out of our container registry here. So we're using the Google container registry and inside of our uh, kind of namespace level uh, registry path here, um, I have a whole bunch of different image versions and we're currently on this 1.0.15 version of our image. So that's the version that's going to be deploying um, based on what we have defined in Git. So we can actually just go in uh, and just confirm that you know, we are all up to date by looking at our deployment config here. And we're on this release tag. And if we have a look, 1.0.15 is the image we're getting. So flipping back to Argo, and we can see our pod is up and running, which means that if I refresh, we have got an endpoint now on our ingress, protected with a certificate, and we're on our uh, dev profile. So Argo um, is uh, pretty much immutable in this way. So if I delete, for example, a deployment service, um, based on the way I've told Argo to sync, which is automatically, uh, it has a sync window. You've got some control over that. You can go and actually define, you know, based on your projects that you've created. Here's my demo backend service. I can say I want it to sync more frequently or less frequently, or of course manual. Um, but there you go. We've just used kind of Argo and GitOps to go and apply an immutable state and stand up an application. So just going to flip back here. So that's Argo and. I think the real power of Argo is it's actually really, uh, it's in its simplicity. It's a really powerful tool um, from a GitOps perspective. Uh, next, we get into Tekton. So Tekton, a little bit of history. It came out of a Kubernetes SIG called, I think at the time it was called Open Function as a Service and was then renamed to Knative. And it was, uh, I think, you know, a project uh, kind of spearheaded by Google to provide you know, a function uh, as a service on top of Kubernetes. So think like Lambda inside of AWS, but on Kubernetes, uh, scale from zero, I want to be able to only send uh, a, you know, my a function code basically as a function uh, through to, to Knative. It actually builds it, compiles it, puts it in a container, and then waits for a request to come through before it actually spins it up. So pretty much, um, you know, serverless. Uh, Tekton was the build component underneath all of that that was actually facilitating the, the you know, the building your source code uh, before Knative deploys it and has since been spun out. And um, kind of also last year, KubeCon, Tekton was a huge talking point because um, where it's kind of headed is it's probably going to become a kind of de facto CI or build substrate for Kubernetes. Um, and this is why it's, it essentially is designed fully around being able to give you a, you know, a, a, a CI server inside of Kubernetes. It also deploys as a, as a, a CRDs, also has an, as a controller that gets created uh, within Kubernetes. Um, one of the powerful things is you can have a Tekton pipeline running in my, my you know, on-premise Anthos lab. Kubernetes and deploying to multiple cloud environments or multiple other Kubernetes clusters. Uh, you don't have to have a one-to-one -one ratio of a Tekton uh, pipeline to a single cluster. And another powerful thing is that resources are treated kind of as interchangeable. So I can define uh, a resource type, for example, a Git repo for uh, my development service, uh, for a backend jar, whatever Java service, and then create another, you know, another resource and apply it to the same pipeline for a Python application or a Golang application, for, for example. And you can kind of create fairly generic pipelines that only use different resources to, to actually trigger different outcomes. One of the, the things that I found very interesting is that uh, Tekton actually uses typed resources. So that means that when I'm passing some from a task in, in Tekton to another task, um, I say, this is a string or this is an array. Uh, I think those are really the only types of support at the moment. Um, and I, what I want to do is I want to show uh, people how, show you guys how Tekton kind of gets put together. And when I, I kind of first started kicking the tires on Tekton, I, I really was a bit taken back. I thought it's kind of felt 
you know, very complicated, but the more you, uh, the more you play with it, uh, the more it really starts to make sense and until it's actually kind of, you know, pretty much a, uh, an incredibly logical thing. And um, another nice thing is you, if you use VS Code, there is a Tekton plugin that allows you to actually get a view of um, what your Tekton resources and pipelines look like. Um, so Tekton is also deployed to Kubernetes and it's running, you know, in its own namespace. Uh, deploys to, by default, a namespace called Tekton Pipelines. Um, and this is where the operator runs. So these are actually the operator, um, uh, you know, pods that get stood up by the Tekton CRD. But uh, I've actually got a separate namespace that I've defined just for my demo service pipeline. So this is where the, uh, the pipeline resources are. And that's what these are really. So in Tekton, you've got this notion of a task and a task can, con can contain multiple steps. Um, so the, really the smallest un unit in a, a Tekton pipeline is a step. Um, and a task is executed as a pod and a pod can consist of multiple uh, containers. Each container can execute a step. So that kind of make, makes sense. It's almost like Lego blocks. I'm, I'm building a big, you know, a big thing made up of smaller things and each smaller thing does some kind of action. Um, in this pipeline that I've defined to build our demo service, um, you know, spring application, it starts fairly simplistically. I've got a Maven build task. Um, then I've got a, I should have ordered these better. Um, I've got a test task. I want to run some, some small, you know, small bit of unit testing. Um, then I need to package it and I'll get into the packaging shortly. Um, and lastly, I'm going to deploy it. And the deployment step, that I've concocted for this demo is a bit interesting because it, it, it uses kind of GitOps as a means of deployment, uh, which I like. And um, it's not exactly a, a traditional, you know, roll out this new image. It's actually, you know, update a, a Git tag to deploy. And then lastly, I'm just cleaning up from the build. To show you what these definitions look like, um, and, and um, much like how I'm storing all of the resources uh, infrastructural resources, really, Kubernetes uh, manifests uh, with my code base. So this, this is the code base. These are all the resources I need to deploy my application, manage and orchestrate and scale it, self heal it. Um, I can store my entire pipeline code uh, relevant to my application. So I can create an immutable pipeline. And in fact, um, we're going to go to the next slide, but that's what I do. I actually create my pipeline with Argo. Uh, so Argo goes and sets up my entire pipeline workflow and applies all of the different uh, Tekton resources I need to build this app. So it's a bit of a weird chicken and egg scenario. But just to kind of step through, and this might be familiar to some of you, if we just look at the build step, and I've tried to comment this to make it a little bit more verbose. Um, uh, my build step takes a few parameters. Uh, basically, I just want to run any tests, and I'm also attaching a persistent volume to um, my build pods, which cache all of the Maven dependencies as part of the build. So, you know, Anthos is just federated with uh, you know, vSphere and it's got a storage class that just attaches the volume for me. Um, and all I'm really doing here is running a package and then I'm passing some parameters through to Maven at build time. Um, so testing is much the same, just running a Maven test. The, an interesting task I thought is the package task. So we're using Kaneko, uh, which is kind of a similar, um, a similar uh, tool, tool to, I guess, package kit or, or, or builder. And what Kaneko allows you to do is build a container image, uh, you know, a, not, not necessarily just a Docker image, but a, an image that is aligned to, you know, the container native, uh, you know, uh, uh, spec. So a, basically one that, that aligns to that, that kind of generic container format. And it doesn't need to have any kind of a host level socket, like a Docker socket or a Docker pipe, for example, to do the, to do the, the container build, which means that A, I don't need to have a privileged container uh, to actually do a, a, a container build anymore, which is uh, really nice if you've ever had to deal with something like Jenkins or GitLab where your runner needs to have access to the host Docker socket to do a Docker build. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a security concern. So, with Kaneko, we, we don't even need any of that. We literally just pass it a Docker file, which is also stored in my 
repository as a top level resource. And this Docker file, I've gone a bit crazy making it very like version or very like variable substitution E. So these are all build args that I can pass through during the container build that can get substituted in or out. And then at the end of the day, setting a, an endpoint uh, that gets executed. So I can pass all of these through at full time um, or even at runtime if I need to. So, so that's where the, 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 um, the, Docker, the Docker file is. If anyone was wondering when the package gets, uh, package task gets executed, it's sitting in Git and gets checked out um, as part of the input. So all these tasks that are getting executed have an input, which is my Git source, and an output, which is you know, the image. I'm just gonna really fast forward this because I see I've got like 10 minutes left here. <laughs> so this will produce a, um, an, an image for us and, and set the output to a registry. Okay, interesting. And then the last thing I do is I actually set a result which is a way you can actually define or hand off a, you know, uh, a variable or a piece of metadata from one task to another, because these all run independently of one another. Uh, when a task gets executed, the steps inside of it, so this is a step and this is a step, and you can see they're running across different images. I'm using CanonCode the build and then I use this Ubuntu image to actually pull out the uh, image version. They can share whatever they need to, but of course, between tasks, you actually have to pass them through. Um, the last thing I'm really gonna to touch on is what, what a pipeline even looks like. So this is a, a pipeline in Tekton, and this is how you knit together tasks. Uh, this pipeline has an input of a Git repository and an output of my image that I wanna push out at the end of the pipeline. So the first thing I do is I set up my build task, and it's calling this task build maven, has some parameters that I define, this task, package task, which builds our Docker container, pushes it out to an image registry, and then lastly our deploy task. Um, and then we do a bit of cleanup. And without too much further ado, um, I want to illustrate what that looks like, but in concert. Uh, so having Argo as a GitOps you know, uh, capability and Tekton as the CI capability working you know, in concert to, to deliver a new service. Uh, the way you trigger pipelines is through pipeline runs. And, um, Pipeline runs essentially stitch together resources. So inside of Tekton, you know, you, you can define certain pipeline resources. Here I've got one that points to and my, you know, uh, container image in Google Cloud in the container registry, and one that points to my Git repository. So I hand that off to my pipeline run, which then invokes my pipeline and passes it all of these variables. So you can see how I could have a generic pipeline um, for pretty much everything. So before we get into the real nitty gritty, uh, how do we tie all these pieces together? Well, if you think about it as Git is the source of truth and the source of changes as well, because if there isn't, a, if it doesn't reflect in Git, it won't get invoked throughout my environment, won't get applied. Uh, Argo is the apply of truth. So Argo says, I see this in Git, it's a change, I need to make sure it gets applied. Tekton is the builder of goodness and invoker of changes. So when I say the builder of goodness, it's actually going to create us a new version of our application. So whether it's front end, back end, doesn't matter, whatever language, Tekton is going to be uh, building us uh, a new a new image. And then, uh, and this is where we kind of get that that stitch together pattern. It's going to essentially create a new release tag. It's going to delete the current one, uh, which is neither good nor bad, but it creates a new release tag and pushes the change to the release tag. And of course, when that change goes back to Git, Argo applies it again. And of course, all of this is sitting in the orchestrator of apps and scale of services, which is Kubernetes. So um, before I jump out of slides, I just want to say thanks to everyone that helped uh, you know, get us the, the environment up and running with Anthos, pretty cool stuff. It's all hosted in uh, EOS Cloud, DigiCloud, and uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice, nice substrate. Okay, cool, so just to uh, revise, here we've got our service deployed, we're hitting it on our ingress, this ingress lives inside of Kubernetes, um, and we're currently sitting on version 1.15. So what I want to happen is, here is Argo, which has applied all of our pipeline resources to our pipeline namespace. So I've just created this exactly how I did the other app, and what I'm going to do is, very simply, I'm gonna version bump, uh, 
don't need to really do any more changes than that. Um, so we're just going to go upper version and Okay, if anyone uh, wants to guess what that was, uh, I'll take, I'll, I'll, I'll think about a reward. Uh, if there's a question and someone can actually suggest what the point of this is. Uh, this because is of what's only uh, for this. The reward, they want to see you topless. Okay, deal, deal. deal. So we push to get, and if we flip over to, Dev, our develop branch. I just don't want to miss things. We should see a new commit version bump. Okay. And what that should do in fairly short order, fairly short order. I haven't like reduced the sync windows or anything like that, but that's going to result in the creation of a new pipeline run. So all of these are task runs or pipeline runs that are hanging off of this, which is going to invoke our pipeline. Um, and it can take a few minutes to get going. I might just sync this manually. It can take a little while. I should probably define a window. Go, 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 go. Let's just sync it, uh, just in a matter of time. I, I think the default sync window is like two or three minutes or something like that. And what this is going to do is it's going to tell um, Argo, hey, go, go look if there's been any changes applied to our Git repository. Uh, and this specific application is looking at our uh, pipeline uh, uh, path within this repository using the development branch. Um, and what's happening is it's found a new pipeline run. And it's going and creating containers. Uh, these containers are the tasks I was mentioning. Uh, so if we flip over, there is actually a fairly um, kind of new-ish dashboard for Tekton. Um, and here we can actually see the, the steps happening. Uh, but I just want to illustrate uh, there is, I'm going to flip over to, ah, we're in the right namespace. So this is the pipeline. Uh, this is the pipeline namespace where our build steps are happening. And you can see here it's running our test task. It's running our package task. And you can see these are made up of multiple containers. Uh, so obviously, Canico itself has a whole bunch of different containers in it. And then we're adding in additional containers to do various other steps. So uh, there's also for Tekton and Argo, as I mentioned, there, Argo has got its own client tool and T Tekton has TKN. So we can actually say, pipeline run list if we wanted to and we can describe this pipeline run and we can actually see that it's currently going uh, the last thing i wanted to do i thought this was fancy is um within the vs code plugin uh, let's just see Uh, I think it needs to update. Let's give it a refresh. It's actually quite nice. Again, as a developer, you don't want to have to go and look at all these things. You want them to just work. So here is a view inside of my IDE. So as a dev, I never have to leave VS Code if that's my idea of choice. And we can see very simply the steps that uh, our artifact is going through. And now we're hitting the deploy step, which means if we flip over to our application here, so here you can see a whole bunch of pods are getting created from this new pipeline run. And as they finish their task, they go into completed state. So they're no longer running. So they're not consuming any resources. It's the ephemeral build. And if we flip over to our demo service here, what we should see once the, um, once the deploy stage is finished, which it is, in short order, and our cleanup stage, uh, no, no logs there, is we should have a new, uh, a new 
uh, artifact that can be deployed, which is committed and reflected to Git, we should see our 1.16 image in our container registry here. Let me just give that a refresh. Didn't need to click the big refresh button. Just needed to click the small refresh button. There's our, our new uh, container image, which has just been built with a whole bunch of fresh vulnerabilities in it. And here we can see that Tekton, as part of that deploy stage, has created a new tag and committed it. And that new tag has resulted in a new service being deployed. Here we can see that it's being created inside of Kubernetes. So it's busy being deployed. And if we hover, we can see 1.16, the old version being 1.15 is now being taken out of service. And if we just go and this shouldn't take too long, it's just terminating, it'll disappear. And if we flip over here, we are now using the latest version of our application. And um, I think the one thing that I'd like to point out is that as a dev, all you have to really do is commit. Um, once that's done, you should see this kind of happening in the background and you shouldn't really have to interface with it too much. Uh, uh, I'll also take, I'll also think of an award for, if anyone wants to kind of uh, guess as to how the deployment actually works. Because um, here you can see Tekton bot has actually created the release tag uh, with some of the metadata from the actual bull. So the version, the new image, and the commit message with the shop or the, the, the digest is all now part of this uh, tag release. And that's it. Uh, that is kind of using Argo and Tekton, these kind of newer, you know, CI, CD, tools designed around the cloud native ecosystem to drive to a first of all interact with each other and, and leverage each other and then also drive these cool patterns like GitOps, um, you know could be, potentially be across multiple environments across the world um, i think that's it's really powerful that the, the distributed no, nature of them is um, kind of i think a lot of the value and that's really it uh yeah that's tecton and argo awesome Thanks, Jules. Um, are there any questions for Julian on, on Argo and Tekton? I, I see a question. Uh, there's a question from Stefan. Jules, how do we have your babies? I don't know. How do you have my babies? Give them back. <laughs> uh, funny. Um, no, like, uh, you know, even for me, and uh, I, I actually used to be technical in the CTO, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, no, but, th but thanks, Jules. I, I, uh, I, I love that you're on, you're on top of it and you, and you know what's going on. Uh, even if I will admit these days that I, I don't as much. Um, but <laughs> but I, I, think the, I think the lesson is, or the, the takeaway is, uh, um, this, this is emerging tech. I, I think Tekton Argo is kind of, kind of leading, leading edge. It's kind of where it's going. Tekton is kind of out of Kubernetes and, and Argo is there. Um, as, uh, as there's been some chat around Ahoy, Ahoy is actually a release management tool that, that we're building in Clive, it's actually online, he's the, the main dev there. Um, we've seen this need around microservices that people are creating and, and the release management of these microservices and how do you control that and, and what's running where and how. Um, and it uses Argo on the back end um, and, uh, and your pipeline stuff. So, so uh, we'll be releasing that open source, which I think is, uh, which is really cool, something to commit back. Um, but yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, thank you, Jules. I appreciate that. And um, there's also been a lot of requests to to see you topless, but I think what we'll tell them is uh, next time, and that's how we'll get the repeat viewers. And yeah, like uh, you know, if we get enough people, we'll also put that on YouTube. So you know, we can. Or someone suggested an OnlyFans account yeah, for Jules, maybe but you know, we pay him ten bucks and he writes text on pipelines. <laughs> On camera for us. So, yeah, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of keen to monetize that. Um, thanks a lot, Jules. That was really cool, man. Um, yeah, like Steph said, we've got some interesting announcements around Ahoy, an open source release management project um, that, that, that speaks to Argo CD. Um, and we're really keen to share some info around that soon. But um, I really just like to thank everyone for, for like spending your time with us. I mean, it's 
you, the, the, it's after work and you, and you manage to sit here and listen to us for, for almost an, you know, an hour and a half. I'd really like to thank you. And also, um, you know, Steph and Jules, thanks a lot for all the help with prepping talks and demos. Like, t Jules, this couldn't have been easy. Thanks a lot for making this and showing it off. You've got a really cool way of breaking down tech so that I can understand it. Thanks a lot, man. Sure, no, no, it's um, fun. And uh, it's cool. Now I can actually get back to all the custom work that has just been building up over the last two years. Yeah, please. You're like, I'll, I'll stop you soon again. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, I thank you to everyone. Uh, I, I've In the chat, I've put a, a link to the Discord, uh, our Discord server, if you'd like to join us there and continue the conversation. But I'll also send it out in, in a message. But um, you're also welcome to, to invite anyone that you feel would benefit from community events like this. And really, um, if there are people who'd like to contribute with speaker slots, you know, if you have a cool presentation or something to show, um, feel free to contact us on techandtiedye at lsd.ca.za. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for, uh, for, for joining us. I'll put the recording up on YouTube as soon as it's edited. Have a great evening. Thank you.